Uh, based on Roshmi Sutcliffe's 1954 novel, The Eagle on the Ninth, which uh, sounds like a golfing novel, but it's uh, it's something quite different. I know you said that it was that was written in the gentler times, so you had to sort of change certain elements to it. But I'm guessing the authenticity was always first uh, on your mind, foremost. Yeah, mind. I wanted to make a film that felt really real. That felt you know we, the audience understood from watching it what it must have been like to be in ancient Britain, and uh, you know felt the wet and the cold and the discomfort and the kind of violence of the times. Um, make, make a different sort of Roman movie, but it sort of has a lot of similarities with the original novel. We've changed quite a few things, but Rosemary Sutcliffe is a beautiful writer, and she particularly was great at describing nature. And um, so we've taken some of that and some of her, the things that she wrote about, and tried to display those visually in the film. There's a lot of gorgeous landscape and specific detail about nature in the in the film. Well, gorgeous and very wet landscape, of course, being in Scotland. And, and at times, for, for, I'm sure for Joe Sixpack, who, who would always look for sort of a reference point, you know, this could be Gladiator on Mud or even <laughs> elements of Midnight Run for the relationship between the guys. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know whether there were kind of discussions with, with Channing and, and Jamie and others. These are the movies that I'd like you to sort of think about or these are the sort of tones I'm going for. Or? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I always do that when I'm making a film. Is to sort of, I look at films for myself to say, you know, what, you know, what can I steal from this and what can I steal from that and what can I, what, what, what can I learn not to do from that film? <laughs> and so, you know, for, the, for the, uh, the actors, I gave them films like The Searchers by John Ford, which has John Wayne as this you know, vicious, racist old cowboy whose niece has been taken prisoner by the Apaches and he's so eaten up with hatred for the Apaches and the savagery of the Apaches and he finds his niece in the end and lo and behold, she's become an Apache, of course, and he wants to kill her. But it has thematic similarities, which are you know about the clash of two different two different civilizations, two different cultures. But it also has this thing of two men in the landscape, walking through, you know, riding through different terrain, putting up with all sorts of hardship on a, on a, on a quest. I also show them Last of the Mohicans, great Michael Mann movie, you know, rom- romantic adventure in the wilderness. Um, I looked at Excalibur quite a lot, John Borman's film, which I think is one of those movies which is very close to being genius, but is let down by a few elements which make it really not work that well. Uh, but it's a shame because there's so much in that film that I, I love and admire. And, and, and the cinematography and some of the ideas of men in nature um, and how nature can be both magical and vicious it were things that we wanted to get into the movie. Well, I always think too when you step into this area, there's, there's, uh, once you, you really have to go for it because otherwise, you know, you just make a take a misstep and suddenly into Monty Python, the Holy Grail. There can be that sort of because we're all aware that it's filmmaking, yes, we're aware yes, that these yes, are yes, actors, yes, and yes. and it's just getting that sort of tone. So even at the beginning when Channing arrives, those sort of disgruntled soldiers, yes, you know, the yes. knights who say meh, like yes. that's. I don't know whether there was times when you know those sort of decisions were quite tough to make because you you need that heroics and you need those dramatic scenes, but you just don't want to step. Too far left or right than people. No, are. I mean you, you know the, the it's 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 a genre that's been parodied, you know, and and you, know, you have to think about the life of Brian or something, uh, and so yeah, you have to be a, you have to be a, a bit careful. And one of the decisions we made was to try and make the film feel more contemporary, you know, to cast a very contemporary feeling American cast as the Romans, um, and so that you're not seeing it as you know Shakespearean actors declaiming, but also you're making some kind of parallel political point about you know. The empire of today is not the same empire in the 1940s and 50s when people started casting Britons as Americans. That was that became a convention then. But at that, you know, that time, Britain was the empire of the world. Mm. Nowadays, there's only one empire. That's that's America. It's the cultural dominant power. It's the military dominant power. So to have Americans and uh, playing and very contemporary Americans playing the Romans, I hope that people will see. Oh, okay, I understand these guys, they're Marines, they're, they, they could be in Helmand province, they could, they, they could be fighting in Afghanistan, I understand who these people are, and you see them in a different way, you're not seeing them through the sort of cliched eyes of you know, all the other movies that you've seen before about the Romans. Of course, the relationship between Marcus and Esca, you know, they're both sides of the, uh, the battle scars on, on both sides of this opposition. And that sort of opposition, the wall could be any wall, could be the Middle East, could be Northern Ireland and all that. Totally but could be. their relationship then, of course, becomes something deeper and, and they, they become bonded. I don't know whether there was any playfulness and, you know, we get sort of Tony Curtis and Laurence Olivier closer. We get snowy Brokeback Mountain as opposed to <laughs> whether it's sort of... Well, you get, you, you, get, you get, you get, um, I think it's, it's an interesting thing in a lot of Roman movies... You know, Spartacus famously with Tony Curtis, but also in in in, in Ben Hur and other movies. The, the, people find that sort of homoerotic subtext to the movies, and um, I think part of that is just because you know 
the uniforms and the look at that place is, is it's very kind of macho. Leather skirts help. <laughs> yeah, the leather skirts. Um, and and uh, and 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 so you know what for me the intention of the movie is to make a, a story about friendship and about deep male friendship and a bond. But you know I'm a, I'm not I'm not uh, going to object if anyone wants to see that as you know deep male friendship becoming something sexual if they want to interpret that that's fine but it's not what was intended i've got to wrap up now but but just very quickly the the, the great range of work that you've done obviously you you won uh, the, the oscar for for one day in september and then the wonderful touching the void and and the great last king of scotland and then state of play and now this such a range of of, of you know from documentary mm. to to sort of this roman epic and uh, uh, this period piece do you think you're Emmerich Pressburger? Is there some? <laughs> but is there a sort of a notion in your head? I just don't want to stay too too long in one place. I want to. Well, I definitely no. Look, I I I I I I get easily bored. I think I just don't, I don't want to do the same thing again and again and again. And maybe that's a mistake because you know maybe you, you know if you do your second or third Roman epic, maybe you get really really good at it. But um, uh, uh, you know, making a film is such a physical and mentally demanding thing, and. The only way I can imagine doing that, doing making a film, is and having a commitment to do it, is if it's something you're really passionate about and you feel something deeply in that story that you want to tell. And so um, I'm just drawn to the things that I like, you know. And that's that's you know, there's there's um, there's nothing more to it than that for me. I'm not sort of intellectually mapping out a career or mapping out, a, you know, oh, I've got this film, I still haven't that genre, I haven't done that genre, I haven't done. That. I'm just thinking, you know, oh, that sounds really interesting. That would be fun to do. That would be different. I can see what I could do with that. Good plan. All right, son. <laughs> Better let you go. I won't, I won't okay. touch your hand.